what was the inspiration behind this series and did anything change while filming? Um, I mean, overall, we really wanted to, or I really wanted to talk about uh, growing up in South Florida and mm. acquiring a uh, kind of unique skill set in order to make it in life, make it in life or in order to survive some of the chaos that was around me and how some of that was really helpful and, and took me a long way. And some of that is stopping me from living my best life. So right, um, right. that was David. We, that's, that was the impetus for David's journey, uh, both mm-hmm. season one and now in season two. Right. D. Well, I came on afterwards as the showrunner. Uh, Terrell pitched it to own and everything, but mm-hmm. you know, I definitely shared in his you know vision after I met with him. I to- as soon as I read the script, I was like, this character just spoke to me in a way that I felt like mm-hmm. I you know so I am the female David um, because of the way that you know going back and forth from your your neighborhood into um, being bused to another school. And also okay. um, the imagination. I was a big daydreamer. So um, it spoke to me in that way. Um, what was it like bringing season two to life? Well, let's see. <laughs> um, it actually was, well, you know, we had, of course, challenges because um, uh, the pandemic. Uh, right. But the fact that, and in some way it deepened it in a way, especially with the mm-hmm. writer's room. You know, we had each other through it. It was the same writers that we had first season, which was fantastic. So I think, it de- you know, things got in there, seeped in there within our writing of each episode um, of what we were going through. So I think it mm-hmm. deepened what David was going through on his, you know, day to day and struggles being someone um, now um, at the present who still is dealing with something he hasn't dealt with in his past. Um, so uh, that I think that helped us a lot. And, you know, with the pandemic, with everything and having this, you know, this new actors coming in to play older, the older selves of, you know, like JG and David, um, it was what was great and what was a challenge uh, was the fact that we couldn't do a lot of things, um, you know, beyond the set as much. But because we had, again, um, a lot of people in place we were still able to communicate, you know, certain things. So I think that helped us a lot in launching the second season. What does the water symbolize in the show? Um, I don't know that, it, I like water, I don't know that there is a, um, there is a fixed symbolism. I think there's a lot of uh, different uses for water. I think um, the water is all around David and it definitely has a lot to do with the change and changes and changing. Um, you know, some of David's largest changes have to do with water and, and, you know, when he went to Hurston, something around water really changed his life. And I think also, you know, the gentrification that's happening in Miami um, due to climate change is mostly due to water and, and sea rise level. Um, so, you know, it, it, if it symbolizes anything, it symbolizes change, but it, it's, a, it, it's not that big of a symbol, it's, figure, it's literal. It's actually happening that the water is changing so much around David. Right, I love that. And last question: What do you think is going to surprise people this season? How much fun this show is! I mean, there's just so there's you know there's some tough things that we talk about in in this show and that we deal with, but there's also a lot of just us being us togetherness, and mm-hmm. I love that. I I think you know you asked us what one of the, some of the challenges were or what was the experience like. And, and we definitely had a lot of challenges doing the show. And by the grace of God, we were given a way to, to do it and make it happen. And watching the show and the episode back, I got so excited because I was like, oh, people are gonna have as much fun as we're having you know, making this show. And that's so important. And there are so many moments that just feel fun and exciting and you know, thrilling. And you know, um, I think I think a lot of people won't be expecting that, especially about a show that's talking about working through trauma. Um, I was going to say the same thing as uh, Terrell, but definitely, um, I had like a thought in my mind that I was just going when uh, Terrell was like talking, up, and I think it's the family, just the family unit, and how they, you know, shifted uh, around one another, um, how their roles have shifted, you know, from the first season. I think that will surprise people. What do you guys love most about the writing? 
Um, yeah, uh, I honestly just love how truthful it is and how much I related to the character. And I had to talk to Terrell in the Hose writer room for that. Yeah, I, I agree. Like how how um, deep the writing is, you know, mm -hmm. and how impactful it is, you know. And, um, you know, uh, he's like Achilles said, Terrell and Lucian and Bird and the whole writer's room, they do an amazing job in making sure that you as an actor connects to the character and also the people watching it can relate to you know, pretty much any character on the show. Right. Our next question is for you, Kwame. Um, joining this season, what was your experience like preparing for the role of David? Uh, a lot of, um, you know, um, watching the show, watching the first season. Um, right. Uh, wanting to uh, uh, match a lot of the nuances that Achilles did with younger David and make mm -hmm. sure I brought that to older David. And... Um, and then just like uh, when it came to like the real estate stuff and um, I have friends who are in the business, so they would give me different books mm -hmm. to read and different materials so I could be more understanding of what I was talking about when I was in the scene. Right, I love that. Um, Akili, I wanna know, how do you think that David has evolved from season one into season two? Well, in um, season one, we see David uh, trying to identify himself as a man, you know what I'm saying? And establish, establish himself as the man of the house. You know what I'm saying? We see him navigate through challenges, relationships with friends and family. You know what I'm saying? And it's good that he has some people that he can go there when he needs to. And he navigated through um, challenging, challenging environments as well. So that will continue over to season two as well. What do you guys want Black boys and Black men to take away from David's character and his experience? Just honestly, I would love for young Black men to learn from him. You know what I'm saying? Right. And know that it's all right to um, let things go. It's all right to seek therapy. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's sometimes a stigma around that something's wrong with therapy and right. there's nothing wrong with therapy at all. Exactly, yeah. Feel, feel comfortable with uh, being vulnerable, you know, expressing mm -hmm. yourself, expressing your emotions. And, and as a black man, just understanding that we don't have to have it all figured out. You know, mm -hmm. it's okay to not have it all figured out. That you know? part. Yeah. So how has this show helped you personally, if it has at all? Uh, for me, it's helped me um, uh, get more in touch into um, being vulnerable mm -hmm. and then also being more comfortable to want to seek therapy myself. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think we all, for the most part, deal with some type of trauma. Right. You know, everybody's trauma is different. Some people's is worse than others, but we all deal with some type of trauma you know, in our lives. So it's just, you know, sometimes we don't feel comfortable, you know, talking to somebody about it or going to therapy. And I think this show really made me personally feel more comfortable. Yes, I love that. It really hits on so many different themes and it's really needed. Um, my last question for you guys, what do you think um, fans can expect from this upcoming season? You. You can go ahead. Okay. Um, I think that, uh, you know, fans are going to just see, like, man, they're going to be on a roller coaster ride, basically. And they'll get to see, you know, um, older David still trying to navigate through the traumas that he dealt with as, as a youth. And, and we'll get to see, you know, um, how he navigates that with the help of younger David, you know, mm. because yeah, he, he's older David's going to struggle. And he's going to yeah. need, you know, younger David to help him get through a lot of these problems. And so we'll see how that uh, plays out. Gloria represents so many women in a way that I personally haven't seen, um, you know, on TV. So for you, where did you pull from to bring this character to life and to make it so authentic and so relatable? Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Well, you know, to be quite honest, I feel like um, I was raised in a Black community, right. and I feel like there are so many, number one, there are so many single mothers, right? The other thing is there are women who, in the face of a host of different challenges, who have said that they are going to hunker down, and do the best that they can by their children. I, I think so many of us, if we were not raised by a woman like that, we know women like that. Right. And so um, maybe to some degree, Gloria's character 
is long overdue for having, you know, their time in the sun. Definitely. What was your biggest challenge, if any, preparing for the role? Uh, well, let's see, biggest challenge. Well, I, I would say actually the biggest challenge for me in the beginning was not coming from a great deal of on-camera experience. A lot of my career background um, has been in theater. So okay. I think I, yeah, so I think I always, especially with season one, I okay. always wondered, you know, if I was doing what was necessary and appropriate for this particular medium, you know, um, especially uh, working with other professionals who, who have a long history in this, you know, I really had to lean upon my directors and uh, fellow cast members to just sort of kind of check in and make sure I was correctly calibrated for this particular art form. Well, you've done a fantastic job. You're really doing your thing. Do you have a favorite like line of dialogue without like giving anything away? Um, okay. So without giving anything away, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something that's kind of crazy, kind of hilarious. Oh. So there is a particular line this season that mm -hmm. I had to say that everybody knows this line, but I didn't, okay? Uh -huh. It is from a very, very popular song. And I I know the song, like 100%, <laughs> I know the song, yeah. but I never knew the intro to the song. Uh -huh. I never knew there was a whole intro to the mm -hmm. song and this particular line was said. So everybody was like, Alana, oh, for real, where have you been? And I was like, well, that's y'all that went and bought the tape. I was just hearing the song <laughs> on the radio. Yeah. So I didn't know that, they were, that was the part of the intro. Yeah. So I would just say later in the season, you will hear a very famous quote. Somebody in my family recently said this, <laughs> like at a family get together, they yeah. said the line, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you it. That is so funny. I really was the only person who didn't know. <laughs> so then when they, so literally on the day that we shot the scene, they played the intro to the song. And yeah. I was like, oh, oh, okay. There you go. Yes, yes. I love that. What advice would you give to somebody who is like Gloria in real life? Wow. You know, I would say give yourself grace give yourself grace um do not listen to any judgment about your circumstance and i would say continue to fight for mm -hmm. your vision of freedom and happiness yeah i love that and we really see that so you know my last question you know connecting it to that what do you think was the driving force behind, uh, you know, Gloria creating and really going after, you know, I want a, a new life and I'm going to do it and I'm going to, you know, really get this done? You know what? I, I can imagine that there is something inside of a human being that realizes that something is wrong. This, this is... Mm -hmm. This doesn't feel like this should be my reality. And mm. I know for Gloria, she has some really, really troubling experiences inside her home. She, she was taught certain things that they, you know, it, it should be a certain way. None of that panned out for her, right? right. So you have this way that you think should be, none of what you said panned out to be true. And these things did not, in my spirit feel like they were right. Mm -hmm. So I think when in the human experience, you have an inclination that something can be better and you lock on to that and you pursue it with everything you have, I feel like there is something inside of Gloria that knows there has to be something better. I, there, somewhere I, I have seen better, somewhere it might not even be in my vicinity or experience, 
but I've come past better. I've met people who are not my family and we make a family. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like somewhere in Gloria, she understood that there could be better and she was going to fight with everything she had to make sure that her children had had an option for that. I want to start with you, Kaden. Can you describe both of your characters? Well, your character in uh, three words. Funny, charismatic, and optimistic. I would say carefree, um, confident, carefree, confident, trustworthy. Mm. I like that, and I and I definitely see that. So, I want to know: Do you think that having David as an older brother has had a huge impact on um, JG? I would say absolutely. Uh, David is an older brother for JG, even, and I can speak from from the adult standpoint. Uh, and Kaden, you can feel free to speak from from your perspective as well. But yeah. having David as an older brother impacts JG every day, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. inspirational. It challenges JG to, to raise his bar, you know? Right. Um, and at the same time, he knows that, you know, he's got somebody in his corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, having David as an older brother, like, you know, kind of shaped JG to who he was, you know, he had to keep JG out of trouble, you know, had to save JG a few times. And I honestly believe without David, he would have become, uh, you know, the man he is today when he's older. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you think that the young JG received everything that he needed growing up because of his brother? Uh, it's because his brother and his mother. Mm -hmm. It's like a 50 50 between them. Uh, you know, they, they kept him out of trouble. You know, they made sure he was good, even when, you know, things financially wasn't good. You know, uh, they made sure, you know, he ate, you know, he wouldn't, if he didn't have them, he wouldn't have the resources, you know? Right. And yeah, they took care of him well. Yeah, I think it's between the mother and the brother. Right, I yeah. definitely agree. Arlen, do you think now that, you know, JG is older, that he understands, you know, more of the perspective of his brother and his traumas and things like that and can connect with him more this season? I'm not gonna say that he, exactly understands but mm -hmm. he's definitely grown into because he knows who David is and what David has gone through he he navigates it well because he knows that's who his brother is he's accepted his brother for who his brother is and he doesn't necessarily want to change David you know right um he that, that's his brother you know David could be any which kind of way David wants to be and JG's gonna love him just the same what has been the highlight, you know, just working on this season? Any standout moments? Uh, Kate, you want me to go or you want to go? Oh, yeah, you can go. You can go. Uh, <laughs> so for me, it was it was the first day of shooting. First mm -hmm. day of shooting. Um, so Kwame Patterson, who plays uh, older David, Kwame and I have been friends forever in a day. So oh, wow. for us being able to work together again, but now really get to like cook it up together that would I mean such a blessing uh and then of course our last day of shooting where we get to you know stand back and know that the the work that we put in we're now uh, now we get to see the fruits of our labor and right. 10 episodes in the can and you know get to see something special yeah I'm gonna have to go to last day too it was like you know I didn't work the last day last day uh -huh. but I was there and so when I got there you know there was there was about finishing the last scene and uh, so what happened was, you know, everybody was there. It was the teacher, it was the actors, it was the crew. And so everybody just came together and talked, we took pictures and it, it was just, it was just a memorable moment. Um, did you guys film during this pandemic? Like, what was that like if you guys did film during all of this? Uh, we absolutely filmed during the pandemic. And I'll say oh that- Oh my gosh. Um, even with the pandemic, we yeah. were all able to connect, you know, clearly you have to social distance, you know, the COVID right. testing and, and so forth, but we built a bond that I think is going to last us a lifetime. We, uh, it wasn't just, you know, what we did on screen. It was the conversations off screen, the, the zoom table reads, uh, Caden's 
uh, writing session that he that he uh, set up with with Terrell. Like it was special. I love that. We did some wonderful, wonderful things that I know, at least for me, I'm I'm taking it with me to the next job and the job job that comes after as well. I love that. Yeah, it was just it was it was um magical, you know what I mean? Like all I said, you know, if we build friendships that could last us a lifetime, and you know, I know, I know, no matter how many jobs I work on, no job's gonna be able to replicate what this job did and meant to me. You feel me? Uh, I love that. Yes. And last question for you guys: um, How has this changed your life? It's changed my life a lot. I, you know, it made a lot of dreams for me come true. Uh, you know, it was my first ever TV show booking. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just got to I got to go to a premiere, and it just changed my life a lot. It was like, man, it's I'm so glad I booked this show, man. You don't know how thankful I am for it. Yes. Well, first off, you deserve it, Caden, because you definitely yes. put in good Thank work. You. So know that. Um, I'll say for me, it changed me in in a very special way. Be, I've been acting now for quite a while. So booking this job is something that I've almost dreamed of for a long time to work with the caliber of people that I'm working with, you know, the type of writers, the type of show, the 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 texture and the things that we tackle in David Makes Man yeah. is something that I've been looking for forever and a day. So it's changed me in, in the sense that, you know, I'm grateful. I'm thankful, you know, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes.